Hi guys, this is Mike. In this video, I'm going to talk about volume modeling in Cinema 4D. Okay, so volume modeling is something new that's been introduced into R20. And it's a really cool and interesting way of modeling that has not been done within Cinema 4D yet. So this is a brand new process and what you are basically going to be doing is you're going to be using uh, a lot of different types of tools within Cinema 4D in order to make the shape and shapes that you want to make in order to create uh, the basic uh, form of the model that you want to use. So I know it seems a little bit confusing, but basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be entering in, say, uh, I'm going to go to a cube, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to here where it says um, uh, volume and I'm going to go to volume builder and what I'm going to do is if you're going to put in um, an object into the volume builder what you're going to do is you're going to take this cube or whatever uh, primitive that you select and you want to make it a child of the volume builder and right away you can see something has changed in your viewport. So let's try something else. Let's get another primitive and, let's, and this time let's choose a cylinder. And I'm going to put this also in the volume builder. So if you go to volume builder, select on that, you can see the objects that you have within your volume builder. You can see which ones are in here. So you can see the cylinder and you can see the cube. And you can see all these other options and I'll get into these a little bit more later. But I wanna to try to keep this pretty simple. So say I have this cylinder and I'm gonna move this up. You can see now that we have these a very, it's kind of like very pixelated. And in a way, it's, it's a great way to think about it. If you have any experience with a 2D graphic programs such as Photoshop, you can kind of think of these as sort of um, pixels. And there, you have the smaller that you get the pixel, the more resolution that you're gonna have on screen. And it's very similar with volume modeling. So if I go to my volume builder, and keep in mind, if I render, you're not gonna see anything yet. This isn't you're not, this is this beginning process, you have to go through this before you get it in order to you can get it to render. So if you go to your volume again and you bring in your volume measure, then you'll be able to start uh, rendering out these, uh, these objects that you make in Volume Builder. So I just wanna make that um, clear right off the bat. So, <clears throat> If I go to Volume Builder and I go to Cylinder, you can see that we have a mode. We have Union and we can also use Subtraction. So if I zoom in, holding down 2 on my keyboard and three on, if I hold down 3 on my keyboard, I can rotate through and above this object, you can see now instead of it being union where it's adding in this, this material, you can go to subtraction where it's taking away. So what's the point and the reason why you would want to use volume modeling is that at no point am I, uh, am I, um, uh, making any of these objects editable. There's still a, a parametric object, so I can increase the radius, I can decrease it, I can um, increase this cube in any direction. So at this point, it's, it's a non-destructive process. So it's very useful for quickly getting a model together without having to go through the process of creating polygons and then extruding and using all the different tools that we have within modeling. 
So if I go to my model layout, oops, excuse me. If I go to my model layout, you can see we have all these other options that we can use to adjust the, the, the edges and points and polygons of our model. With this process, and let me go back to startup, we can just use these primitives and we can also use splines. We can use all these different options in order to make something within Cinema 4D. So it's, it's a really nice process. So let's go back here. We can also go to our cube and we can reverse this process if we want. We can also rotate this around. And if I go to 90, if I hold down shift, I can snap to 10 degree increments and get to 90 degrees. So if I rotate around here and I pull this out, you can then see, uh, oh, I just want to make sure I, I make this point. You want to make sure your object, your whatever object you're intersecting, just want to make sure it's bigger than the, um, than the object that you're digging into, that you're creating the subtraction. So you can have this hole, and then what I can do is I can use my move tool, and then I can move this around. So it's a really nice process, and you and keep in mind I'm just using this as a demonstration. But you can use all these any any of these other objects that you have. You have this torus maybe, and you can go to um, a different orientation, say in the Z, and then I can then bring this into my volume builder, and then say maybe I want to make this ring radius. I want to make that smaller, and I want to make this pipe radius and I want to make that a little bit smaller so it can you can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm going to pull this out and then maybe I want to make this a little bit smaller so it's kind of like a handle almost. And I can use this um, these handles here in order to adjust. So there's all these different types of options that you can add in to your, your object. And this is just a quick example. So now you're kind of looking at this and you're just like, okay, this is great, but you know, why is it so kind of pixelated? So once you get this to the basic form that you want, um, and I know this is a little bit nonsensical, but um, you know we can try this. We can go to a cylinder, and if I rotate this around, and uh, very quickly, uh, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I accidentally used the rotation segments. Um, if I can go to radius, make this a little bit bigger, make the height a little bit smaller. And now you have a cup, a possibly maybe like a coffee mug. And then what you can then do is you can copy this cylinder. Let me get this back in the volume builder. And then I can simply make this smaller bring this up a little bit, and then go back to Volume Builder, and then I can make this, uh, excuse me, I can bring this up here, and I can make this Union, and then I can make this Subtract. There we go. So this hierarchy is important. So you wanna make sure you have the hierarchy correct when you're doing this. And what I like about this is that once you get the form down and how you want it to be shaped, then you can start adding in some of these smoothing processes. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to come to the volume builder. And then we can look at a volume type. We can see that it's a sine distance field, but we can also go to a fog. You can kind of see kind of a, 
a ghost effect using this volume type. Now if we go back, you can also see that we have a voxel size. So as you drop this voxel size, and I'm just clicking this arrow, down arrow, and we can slowly get to a point where we're getting a little bit more resolution. And we can bring this all the way down, and we can get it to even one. And you can see now we have this uh, pretty smooth, oops, let me bring this back up again. Um, I also want to make sure that I uh, uh, make this point that you want to be careful about using the voxel size and as you get to lower and lower amount um, it is pretty taxing to your computer so I just wanted you to understand that um, you know th this is important to slowly move this down to a, a lower amount this lower voxel size and you can kind of see how it um, how it affects your, your model. So I'm just kind of rotate around here and kind of look at my model and see if I like it. Um, you can see now you can make some adjustments and that's what's really beautiful about this that it's, it's so, um, it's non-destructive. So you can really come back and make adjustments to your model. And what I want to do is I just want to make this this radius a little bit smaller. So that might be a little bit too small. So let's bring this back up, bring this up a little bit more. Um, and I think we're okay. Uh, so we kind of have this, this model, but you can see we have these sort of these hard edges. So maybe we want to take a look at some of the other options here. We have the smooth layer. So if we add in the smooth layer, you can see that um, if I select it, we also have some of these other options that we can choose. So you can already, already see that this has made, and I want to take a look at this, kind of feel like I might have accidentally rotated this around maybe. Let me go to one of my views. And you can kind of see that I accidentally must have rotated this around. So I'm just gonna kind of get this straightened up a little bit. And this is just for demonstration purposes, but I at least wanna kind of keep this kind of clean. And I can always go to my rotation, make sure that's at zero. Okay. Um, so let's go back to our front. I must have accidentally rotated that around. So I just want to make sure this looks okay. So um, if I go to Volume Builder, back to my object and we're on our smooth layer you can see that we also have a strength we can kind of adjust this as well so it's sort of similar if you're using any kind of sculpting you can see how the strength affects that and we can bring that up you can see there's a, a tiny bit of a lag as a, a process of the computer will kind of catch up we have a filter types, we have Gaussian, which is kind of a more of a stronger kind of um, a filter type, but you can go to other ones that may not be so strong. You can see this one, this mean curvature, it keeps it very sharp and very tight. So we can go back to our Gaussian. And, um, you know, we have these other options like maybe reshape, but one thing I want to talk about is now getting to the point of like say you like what you have so far and you, you want <clears throat> excuse me you want to maybe render this out what then you can do is you can go to your volume and you can go to volume measure so at this point this how this hierarchy is uh, works it's very important you want to take your volume builder put this as a child of your volume measure and you can see how the viewport changes so now if i a render to viewport 
you can see now I can then render. And what's really nice is that as you go through this, as you do your modeling, and you go through the process of, you know, it's a back and forth process, as you probably already know, as you're modeling or doing any type of creative work, you're gonna be going back and forth. But that's what's really beautiful about this process is that if I wanna change this, if I wanna do something differently, I don't have to start all over again and start modeling polygon by polygon. I can come in and add in something else to my, uh, to my model. And, um, and uh, you know, let me try something else. Let me try this, um, let me try a cylinder and say, I want to give this cylinder sort of a platform. And I'm not sure why you would want this <laughs> or, uh, you know, maybe a, a lip to your, your, your model, but you can always come back in and make an adjustment, pull this in, bring this into your volume builder. And you can see now you're adding in this other option. And let me just kind of center this a little bit, make this a little bit nicer. But you see what I mean? How you can kind of add in parts to your, your model even after you, it's great for concepting. Now, I do want to point something out though. So let me go to my uh, Gaussian, uh, excuse me, my lines, and you can see the dense mesh of this. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see how the mesh is for your model. So if you're gonna be doing any type of UVs, you're probably gonna be wanting to run a uh, retopology of this, of this model. So what you would do is you would go to your model layout and then you would use your poly pen tool. And then what you would then do is you would go to, um, you would go to reproject results. So you would have that checked and then make sure that you're not selected. Your model is not selected. And then you can start reprojecting and putting in uh, polygons in order to re uh, retopologize this this model, you can see the topology of this is, you know, not very conducive for like, um, you know, it, this is a very high res model. So I just wanted to um, make that point. Um, so if I go to an A and you can see your model, it's a really beautiful way of getting your models together um, without having to go with uh, a different type of modeling process. Uh, a lot of the videos that I've made so far have used a polygon by polygon modeling. So this is another option. And I don't feel that it replaces something. I don't think it's uh, redundant to have other modeling capabilities. I just look at it as another option in your toolbox in order to use depending on your situation and depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So I feel that, um, you know, as I go through this and give you some more tutorials, you know, this is just a quick introduction to get you your thinking and to kind of think about this type of modeling a little bit differently. But um, as I go through and making tutorials, you can, I'm going to show you um, options and situations where this would come in really handy and also some of its pitfalls and some of its drawbacks. And I already mentioned one where you have to retopologize this particular model to get it a low res and you know start putting in some UVs and some texture and texture painting using body paint. So thanks for watching. If you want to uh, download this particular uh, exercise, the Cinema 4D file, you can go to astronomicskills.com and it also has all the other uh, exercise files that I've used in all the other tutorials that I made so far. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.